Amen. Well, let's get you back on the radio again today. We certainly do appreciate the good Lord allow us to be able to come to you by means of radio. This is the Baratro Baptist Church broadcast. We certainly are privileged to be the pastor there, Brother Tim Krotz. And we thank the many of you who listen to our radio program each week. And those of you who let us know that you listen to the broadcast, we certainly are grateful for that. We certainly are thankful for it. We're thankful for the radio stations that still see the need and the necessity of broadcasting the gospel over the radio airways. That's a great blessing. And we're grateful also for YouTube and Facebook that we're able to shower, share our radio broadcast as well. Any outlet that we're able to use to get the gospel out, we're thankful for that. And we'll continue to use them as long as we're able to do so. Amen. All right, so we've been preaching in Psalm 25 for a number of weeks now. We still have quite a number of weeks to go uh, in this great Psalm, Psalm 25. We've been talking about for the last couple of weeks on, uh, from verse number three on being ashamed, things that we uh, should be ashamed of as believers and things that we should be ashamed of as unbelievers, things in our life that bring us shame. And certainly none of us desire to be um, shamed by man, but certainly we don't want to be uh, we don't want God to be ashamed of us for sure, amen. And so we're going to continue today, not with that thought, but we're going to move on to verse number four, and we're going to talk about some things concerning salvation. And so we're glad that you are listening along with us today. I hope the Lord will certainly help you for doing so. We are the pastor of the Baratrol Baptist Church in Cana, Virginia, and we've been there for a little over 20 years now. The Lord sure has blessed us with a very humble beginning and the church has grown exponentially over the years we're very thankful for that the ministry has grown as well the lord sure is good to us in all uh, all ways in all situations we encounter all kinds of different things along the way that are setbacks and troubles in our life but if there were no troubles and no difficulties in life uh, then we certainly wouldn't uh, need or understand the necessity to trust the Lord and to grow in His grace. And he's never failed us, not one time. He is a very faithful God, and we have cert certainly are honored to be a part of His wonderful family. It's a blessing to know Him. We have been, for the past month, the entire month of April, we have been having our Sunday evening service at 2 o'clock instead of 6 o'clock. This is a new time change that we are experimenting with to see if we like or if we will continue with. And thus far, it has seemed to work very well. But we're going to give it one more month before we make a final decision. And so for the entire month of May, our Sunday evening service will be at 2 p.m., instead of 6 p.m. We have our regular Sunday morning, Sunday school at 10, our worship service at 11. And then those of us who drive a good distance to the church, we just remain at the church. We take our own lunch. We eat lunch together as a church family. And then there are many who live around the church um, close by. They will actually go home and come back to the church. But we have our evening service at 2 p.m., and we'll make a final decision on whether or not we will keep that time at the end of May. So that is one time change. Should you desire to come and visit with us at our church, we'll be glad to have you. You can visit our church website. There is many uh, things concerning our church on the website. All of our uh, church times, church locations, sermons preached by myself, our assistant pastor, Brother Kyle, and other folks as well who have attended our church over the years. And so that would be a help and a blessing to you. If you'd like to contact us, you can do so via our website. You can email us directly from our website, or you could call or text me at my personal phone number, 336-755-7015. All right, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer, and we're going to continue in Psalm 25 today. Lord, we sure do love you. We thank you for loving us. We are very undeserving of the goodness of God, the blessings of the Lord. But we do hope, Lord, that you would help us today to be a blessing to you and to be an encouragement, Lord, to those who are listening. I realize, Lord, my insufficiency to do anything uh, to be a blessing or a help to anyone without your help. And I sure do desire that you use us now to that end. Well, thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says in Psalm 25, Psalm 25, verse number one, it's a Psalm of David. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. 
Let not mine enemies triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. If you notice in verses 2 and 3 there that I just read, the word ashamed is used three times in those two verses. And we've been dealing with the subject of shame for the last several weeks. We're going to move into something else. Verse number four, the Bible says, show me thy ways, O Lord, teach me thy paths. Verse number five says, lead me in thy truth and teach me for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. And so what we see here in verses four and verse number five, in verse verse number four, the Bible says to show me and teach me. And in verse number five, the Bible says to lead me and teach me. Now we see several things here when we look at these verses of scripture. First of all, we see a willingness to know God's ways and to be taught his paths. Ain't that a blessing? Let me ask you this. Do you have a desire to know the ways and the paths of God? Now, if you have a desire, if you have a desire, it will be manifest in your actions. It's more than just saying that you have a desire to know the ways of the Lord, to know the paths of the Lord. There will be something manifest in your actions to prove that you actually have that desire. I believe there will be some Bible reading on your part, a desire to read the Bible, study the Bible. I think there will be some prayer evident in your life. I believe that there will be some church attendance, amen, and not just a sporadic thing when you feel like it. I think there'll be some Sunday school attending, a desire uh, to learn more about the Bible in Sunday school class. I think there'll be some listening to preaching besides just when you attend church. I think there'll be a desire in your heart to witness to others concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's a long list that goes on and on that we could associate with that. But I think if you have a desire, as the psalmist did, show me thy ways, O Lord, teach me thy paths. I believe it'll be manifest, not just in your words, but in your actions. Second of all, not only is there a desire to have a knowledge of the ways and the paths of the Lord, I think there will also be a willingness to obey God's way once it is known. He said, but I say that because verse number five, he says, lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. And so we must first know God's way. We must first know God's path. And then we must be willing to do what we know. See, it's one thing to have a knowledge of what God would desire of us or what God does desire of us. It is another thing altogether to have a willingness to put that knowledge into action. And so May the Lord help us. We, I, I know, you know, if you spend any time dealing with the public or witnessing to people publicly, talking to people who profess to be saved or claim to be saved, and certainly I, I'm not saying who is or is not saved. That's between them and the Lord. But you'll certainly understand in, in conversation with individuals, especially in the area in which we live, there's the majority of the folks have some knowledge concerning the things of God, but it doesn't take very long to see that there's not very many of them who have a desire to allow God to lead them into the paths that the Lord would have them to go. Listen, we are we are such weak and dependable creatures. Oftentimes we have this mentality or this idea uh, that we are, you know, some kind of super Christian or super strong, or we can make it on our own. But I'll tell you this, we are such weak and dependable creatures that we must cry, Father, tell me which way to go and then teach my trembling feet to walk therein. We Listen, we, we certainly don't want to go our own. I hope you don't want to or are not interested in going your own way uh, because that would be a disaster, amen. But we must not just know the way of God. We must be willing to walk in that way. Now, listen to this this quote. I'm going to read it. It is a rather lengthy quote, but I think it'll be beneficial. It's by Robert Mosom, if I pronounce his name correctly, M-O-S-S-O-M. And it's from the Treasures of David commentary concerning this passage of Scripture. And this is what it says. There are ways of men and the ways of God, the paths of sin and the paths of righteousness. 
<coughs> excuse me. There are thy ways, O Lord. <coughs> excuse me. There are thy ways, O Lord, and there are my ways. Thine are the ways of truth. Mine are the ways of error. Thine which are good in thine eyes, and mine which are good in mine eyes, thine which lead to heaven, and mine which lead to hell. Wherefore, show me thy ways, O Lord, teach me thy paths, lest I mistake mine own ways for thine. Yea, lead me in the truth, and teach me, lest I turn out of thy ways into mine own. Show me thy ways by the ministry of thy word. Teach me thy paths in the guidance of thy spirit. Lead me in thy truth by the assistance of thy grace. Man, what a great, what a great quote concerning those passages of scripture. I particularly like the part where there are ways of men and there are ways of God. And man, when we follow our ways, when we do our own things, they lead to hell. That's where they lead. We must follow the ways of the Lord and the paths of the Lord, which lead to heaven. Now, it is true that there is always conflict. You and I that are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, there is, there are, there, we are a new creature. We've been born again. And uh, just to be honest with you, we have a dual nature. We have a spiritual nature because of the new birth. We have a desire in us because of that salvation that we have obtained or acquired from the Lord Jesus Christ, a desire to live for God and to serve him. However, it's also very important for you to know and understand, dear friend, that our flesh has not yet been redeemed, and that's not going to be redeemed until the rapture of the church. And so our flesh is corrupt, it's wicked, amen, and our, there's a constant conflict between the spiritual man and the fleshly man, and uh, there's always this, this bent within my idemic nature to do things my way, or am I going to rely upon the ways of God? Am I going to trust what God has to say and um, put, bring my flesh under submission that I might follow the way and the path of the Lord? May the Lord help us to always follow the Lord. Listen, this is going to be a decision that you make not just daily, but a decision that you make many times a day. We're going to be debating in our mind, am I going to obey God and his word and go in the way in the path which he leadeth us, or am I going to go the way of my flesh, the way of the world, and the path that unrighteousness and ungodliness has laid before us? Now, this is true in both for the saved and the lost. Listen, the lost are debated in their minds whether their way will work to get them to heaven. They, they're they weighing in their minds, have I done enough good deeds or enough good works or am I a good enough person to get to heaven? I can answer that for you with a resounding no, because the Bible says, Jesus himself said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. But that lost individual, they, they have different levels of, of mentality or knowledge concerning the things of God. Some of them does, do not believe that there is a God of all, and they're busy trying to convince themselves. You know, you know why there's, they work so hard at trying to convince convince themselves that there is no God, because God has given them every man a, uh, a measure of faith, and they are doing everything that they can to try their best to overcome what they cannot understand concerning creation, even of themselves, plus the not even to mention all the, all the heavens declare the glory of God, and all that around all that, are, that is around us declare the glory of God. And so there's a battle in their mind. Am I going to go my way and believe that there is no God, or am I going to understand that my conscience and the very creation around me and the very faith that God has placed within me, I am going against all three of those things because I want to go my way and believe that there is not a God. You know what the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. No doubt that individual in the majority of the cases, have heard someone 
testify concerning the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Many of them has even heard a clear presentation of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so in their mind, there is a constant debate going on concerning whether or not I'm going to believe my way, I'm going to choose my path, or I'm going to submit myself to God's way and to his path and be born again. And so look, it comes down to this. If you are a saved man, you can choose your own way and your own path, and you can suffer the consequences of the Lord for not being willing to follow his way and his path. If you are a lost person, you've never been saved. You, you, it, com it comes down to this. You can choose to go your own way and do your own thing and choose your own path and make your own laws and your own guidelines and you will die in that way, spend eternity separated from God in the lake of fire forever and ever, or you can understand that your way is not acceptable in the eyes of God, and you can choose His way and be born again, and then you can live forever with the Lord Jesus Christ. What a great blessing. I choose life. I choose Christ, amen. I, I found out long ago that my way was nothing but death and destruction and separation from God, and I gladly chose His way, which is far better. Listen, not only is His way far better for all eternity, His way is far better even now in the life that I'm living. The physical life that I am living now is far better than it was when I was doing my own thing and going my own way, life is far better now following his way and going down his path. Amen. And so the verses of scripture says, verse 24 of uh, Psalm 25, verse 4 and verse 5, shew me thy ways, O Lord, teach me thy paths. Verse 5, lead me in thy truth and teach me. Now, I want to look at this next, this next little phrase for just a few minutes that we have left. For thou art the God of my salvation. Now, I want you to notice the personal salvation that he makes mention of here, or the personal God, if you will. For thou art the God of my salvation. This is personal to David. David has the desire to know the paths and know the ways of the Lord because God is the God of his salvation. Now, I want to be very clear. I want to be very plain. And I want, want you to know that I at least have some understanding of the context of the scripture here. The word salvation in this verse of scripture is not necessarily what we would consider as deliverance from sin and eternal judgment or the salvation of our souls, if you will. But in a more general sense of deliverance, it is the deliverance from danger and death. In particular, I believe that David is making a reference to, uh, when he's speaking of the God of my salvation, he's talking about deliverance from his enemies. We say that because verse 2 of this psalm, David said, Oh my God, I trust in thee, let me not be ashamed, let not mine enemies triumph over me. He makes mention of those enemies again in verse 19 of the same psalm. He says, consider mine enemies, for they are many, and they hate me with a cruel hatred. And so when David made this proclamation here in Psalm 25 and verse number five, and he said, for thou art the God of my salvation, I believe that in the context of the Psalm, he is making it very clear that he's talking about deliverance or protection and safety from his enemies. And by the way, that kind of salvation certainly comes from the Lord. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 21 and verse number 31, it says, but safety is of the Lord. Now, I know that I just went through this entire spiel, and rightly so, concerning that this verse isn't talking about the salvation of our souls as far as being saved from the penalty and the judgment of sin. However, I also know that just because that we are 
preaching primarily to Bible-believing individuals. There are also some folks who listen. In fact, I have had folks to tell me that they have their, uh, I, some of the stations, that not all the stations anymore, but some of the stations that I come on are very early in the morning. And, uh, some, and some of those are on Sunday morning. And uh, they are secular stations during the week. And individuals I have talked to in the past, lost people, have come contacted me and said that they have their radio set to a certain radio station during the week for it to come on. And it comes on on Sunday morning and they're laying there in the bed and they begin to hear a preacher preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ unto them. So I understand the majority of people listening to the sound of my voice may be people who are saved. They've experienced the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. But I also understand that there are folks listening uh, around the world and the means that carry the gospel in the day that we live that are not saved. Amen. And so I can certainly relate from this passage of scripture that because salvation from sin is deliverance from our greatest enemy. Now, we're making mention of the fact David is talking about this salvation as deliverance from physical enemies. I hope none of you that are listening to the sound of my voice have physical enemies. Unfortunately, I understand that we do. I'm glad that God can deliver us from those physical enemies. Now, there is an enemy far greater than any physical enemy that you may have, and that is the enemy of sin. You see, the Bible says that the wages, that means the payment for, that the wages of sin is death. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says, there is not a just man that doeth good and sinneth not. The Bible says that our sin has sinned separated us from God. And so we have a huge enemy. We have an enemy in our life that is apt to destroy us, an enemy that wants to take us to hell and separation from God for all eternity. And so I'm glad we can have deliverance from this greatest of all enemies, and that is the enemy of sin. You see, the Bible says that Jesus came to seek and to save those which were lost. Aren't you glad that the Bible says that we can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved? The Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What a blessing. We can have deliverance from sin. Now, let me ask you this. If you have no desire to be shown his ways, that's the context, that's the passage. If you have no desire to be taught his paths or to be led in his truths, I have a question for you. Who or what is the God of your salvation? David said that he is the God of my salvation. And the reason that David was so adamant about the fact that this God, the true and living God, the only God, amen, was the God of his salvation is because he desired the ways of the Lord. He desired the paths of the Lord. He desired the truths of the Lord. And so let me ask, ask you, friend, if you're going about your own way, you're only interested in your own path, you're only interested in your own truth, and you're only interested in doing your own thing, to whom or to what are you depending on to be your salvation? Listen, friend, if you're dependent upon yourself, you are greatly, greatly fooled. You have, you have a very high opinion of yourself, and the Bible says that pride goes before the destruction and a holy spirit before a fall. And you're going to find out one day that your way is not his way and that your path is not his path and that your truth is not his truth. And you're going to be in for a huge and eternal disappointment. Maybe you say, well, preacher, how about this? I, I have this religion. I'm a part of this denomination. I have done this set of deeds and I have not done that set of works. I have been involved in this and I have never taken part in that. I've been baptized. 
baptized. I am a member of a church. I am an upstanding member of the community. I am a moral asset to my community. Listen, all of those things are wonderful things, and they are commendable in the life of any moral individual. That's a great blessing. But friend, that's not salvation. That's not Jesus' way. Jesus declared in John 14, 6, he said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. You see, there's some very emphatic things mentioned in that verse of Scripture. Jesus said, I am the way. You know what that means? That means that there is not another way. Listen, Jesus is not the best way. He is the only way. Jesus is not one of many ways. He is the only way. You want to be led in the way of salvation? Jesus is the way. You want to be led in the path of truth? He said, I am the way. I am the truth. You know what that means? That every other means that is made up by man and mentioned by man and taught by religious men and religious denominations around the world, every other way that does not mention that Jesus Christ is the way is a lie because not only is he the way, he's the true. That means that every other thing that man tries to do or that man tries to say in order for them to get to heaven is not the truth. Amen. Jesus is the way, the truth. Not only is that, he is the lion. You see, friend, you're listening to the sound of my voice today. It is obvious that you have physical life. But if you've never been born again, your spirit is dead. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 1, and you hath he quickened who were dead in your trespasses and sins. You see, friend, your spirit needs to be made alive. And the only way for that to happen is for you to be born again. Jesus told Nicodemus, probably the most moral and religious man could be that ever lived. Jesus told that man that his religion was not sufficient, that his good deeds and his good works were not sufficient. Jesus told that man, he said, ye must be born again. He told Nicodemus again in verse 7 of that same passage, he said, marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born born again. You see, the Bible says in Acts chapter 4 and verse number 12, the Bible says, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other, none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Listen, friend, Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth and Jesus is the life. Years ago, the psalmist of David said, show me thy ways, O Lord, Teach me thy paths, lead me in thy truth. Listen, friend, I am glad that the Lord will show you. I'm glad the Lord will teach you. And I am glad that the Lord will lead you in the truth. I hope that through this broadcast today, if you've been listening to the sound of my voice and you've been concerned about the way, you've been interested in the path, I hope that God has allowed me to say something that would lead you into the truth, and that is that Jesus Christ is our only hope of salvation. The best man that ever lives will come short of being good enough to get to God. The only way that any man can get there is through Jesus Christ. Listen, if you don't know him today, you can. Salvation is simple. You realize that you're a sinner and your sin has separated you from God. You understand the truth that Jesus Christ has paid your sin debt by his death on the cross. They placed him in a borrowed tomb, and three days later, he got up victorious over death, hell, and the grave. Amen. You place your faith in that finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ as the only means of salvation, and he will save you from eternal damnation. Listen, our time is quickly coming going again today. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Bear Trail Baptist Church broadcast. May God bless you until we meet again is our prayer. 
All right. Thank you so much for watching and listening on our social media outlets. May God bless you till we meet again is our prayer.